Live from KSEC 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a child is now the latest victim following a deadly attack at Wisconsin Christmas Parade. Outside with live cam, nowhere near as chilly this morning, but still a bit on the cool side. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, November 24th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, I felt the change right away because I, out of habit, I had the jacket on already. I'm like, do I really need this? Yeah, you still need it though. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I guess because it was so quick from, you know, the car. I mean, I, I wore it, but you know, from the car to here, eh, let's find, not as cold. <laughs> let's find out what's going on with Mike Ostrage on this Thanksgiving Eve. Yeah, temperatures are about 15, in some cases 20 degrees warmer than yesterday. A lot more humidity too, but yeah, still, jacket yeah. this morning. Won't need this afternoon. I mean, it's going to be mid 70s. Um, we're going to be seeing some windy conditions too. So it's all going to change tonight. Thanksgiving's looking nice. It's going to start off on the wet side, which uh, well, that's something to really be thankful for tomorrow morning is getting some rain since it's been forever. It seems like since we had some decent rain. Good view out there looking off to the west over by the airport. 57 degrees yesterday. I think we'll, we'll drop down another degree or two, but yesterday we dropped down to 38. So yeah, almost 20 above what it was yesterday. It's still 60 in comfort. We had some freezing readings out in the hill country yesterday. Nothing like that today. And here's one of the reasons. Look at all this humidity that has definitely come back into the picture. And that's going to be feeding some of those showers actually developing later on this evening and then especially overnight. There's a little bit of fog, some even up around San Marcos, uh, hints of it here and there. So just kind of watch out for a little bit of fog around the area this morning. Mold is on the low side and throughout the day we are going to be seeing temperatures get up to 70 at noon, 73 for a high. A lot of clouds around here, a lot of those high clouds, some sunshine mixed on in. Like I said, it is going to be kind of breezy and then a couple of showers are going to be developing just a few of them later on this evening. More of them in the overnight hours, but as things are moving along fairly quickly, so it looks like uh, we will see an end to the rain by tomorrow afternoon, but then there's another rain chance over the weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. San Antonio police say a man is in critical condition after a shooting and an hours long standoff at a mobile home on the west side last night. Officers got a call around three in the afternoon yesterday for a shooting in the 7600 block of West US Highway 90. When they got there to that mobile home park, police say they discovered a man in his 50s with a gunshot wound on the floor. He was taken to the hospital. After the shooting, the suspect barricaded himself in his mobile home for several hours. The standoff finally ended late last night. It's not clear right now what led to the shooting or if the men knew each other. More devastating news for the tight knit community in Wisconsin it was rocked by tragedy during a Christmas parade this past Sunday. A child has died from injuries sustained in the attack and has now become the sixth victim in that massacre. Now the man who police say had turned the Christmas parade into a deadly chaos has made his first appearance in court. CNN's John Lawrence has the latest. The moments police arrested Daryl Brooks caught on a doorbell camera just minutes after he allegedly committed a massacre. Police say he's the man who rammed his SUV into a massive crowd at a Christmas parade in Waukesha, Wisconsin, Sunday. You're hearing this carnage, that like things are breaking and you're seeing things going up in the air and then all of a sudden we see the truck go by. Now, just about 48 hours after allegedly unleashing horror on a holiday parade, Brooks is facing a judge for the first time and has been charged with five counts of first degree intentional homicide and is facing a life sentence for each count. Charging documents total 62 people injured in the attack. Today we learned of another death of a child related to this case. We do expect a sixth count for first degree intentional homicide to be issued or added, excuse me, to this case. Brooks has an extensive criminal history dating back to the 1990s, is a registered sex offender in the state of Nevada, where he has an outstanding warrant from 2016 and was out on bail on other domestic abuse charges from earlier this month, where he allegedly hit the mother of his child with a closed fist and used his vehicle to run her over in the parking lot of a gas station. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Jury deliberation is set to continue today in the trial of three men accused of rather charged with killing Ahmad Arbery in Georgia. The jury spent about six hours deliberating yesterday before adjourning without a verdict. They are to resume later this morning weighing murder charges against father and son Greg and Travis McMichael and their neighbor William Bryan. 
McMichael said they suspected Arbery was a burglar when they chased him past their home in February 2020. McMichael testified he fired in self-defense. Family and friends gathered to say goodbye to the youngest asteroid victim, nine-year-old Ezra Blunt. His funeral was held at a church in Dallas yesterday. Ezra and nine other people died after being trampled during the music festival in Houston earlier this month. Ezra went to the concert with his father because his father said his son was a big Travis Scott fan. But soon after the concert started, concert goers rushed toward the stage and the boy was run over. He was placed in a medically induced coma with damages to his brain and other organs. Ezra died a little more than a week after the concert. Travis Scott paid for the funeral expenses for Ezra Blunt's service. A Missouri man who spent over 40 years in prison for a triple murder he says he didn't commit is finally free. Kevin Strickland, who was 18 at the time of the murders, told authorities he was at home watching television when the crime happened. Strickland's first trial ended in a hung jury, but a second trial, a jury convicted Strickland of capital murder in April of 1978. A survivor of the shooting, Cynthia Douglas, reportedly recanted her identification of Strickland being at the scene. Her family said police pressured Douglas to identify Strickland in the case. A new law finally allowed a prosecutor to begin advocating for his release. Right now, 436, about 55 degrees. San Antonio Spurs may be struggling on the court this season, but we're going to show you how they are still champions off the court for our community. Outside with live cam. Yeah, Mike's tracking another cold front, and he has mentioned the possibility of some rain and a storm or two. We'll find out when that might happen. Coming up right here on GMSA, we are just getting started. Welcome back. The UTSA Roadrunners have clinched their first ever Conference USA West Division title and the right to host the Conference USA Championship game. Roadrunners will complete their incredible season of first if they beat North Texas in Denton this Saturday afternoon and finish their season undefeated at 12 and 0. Mean Green have a chance to ruin UTSA's perfect season. They may be five and six overall, but they've won their last four games. It would like nothing better than to hand UTSA their only loss of the season. We're going to get their best uh, like we get every team. You know, they're going to lay it on the line for us. And, uh, you know, we're going to go in there and do the same. So it's going to be a great test for us. And uh, we're just excited to, and, uh, and ready for the game. We're going to get their best shot. And uh, as we have all season with every team. And, you know, wouldn't want it any other way. They're a great ball team, and we're expecting a great game. Kickoff Saturday in Denton is set for 1 p.m. Congratulations to the Alamo Heights Mules and head coach Ron Ritterman. They made it through the regular season undefeated at 10 and 0 and now improved to 12 and 0 overall with back to back postseason wins. Now the Mules must get past nine and three Marble Falls who took two overtimes to get past Brenham 27 21 in week one of the postseason. You know, it's kind of a, a pivotal point for us. We wanted to make sure that we could get past this point and keep going, you know. So we had great momentum in the game last week. Everybody was doing good. Everybody played well. And so hopefully we can keep that momentum going. It's really exciting. We haven't done this in a while. Last year we got stopped in the second round, and we were pretty sad and toughed it up. So this year we changed it up a few things and made it past the third round. Kickoff in Dripping Springs Friday night set for 7 p.m. And KSAT 12 Sports will be there. Our Spurs might be struggling on the court this season, but off the court, they're champions again, helping make sure Thanksgiving's a little brighter for families on the west side. Spurs players Kelvin Johnson, DeJounte Murray, Zach Collins, Bryn Forbes, Devin Vassell, and Derek White were joined by the Coyote and other volunteers at the Frank Garrett Community Center. They helped distribute Thanksgiving meals to 200 families and seniors. Thanks to the San Antonio Food Bank with turkeys provided by HEB. This is part of the Spurs season of giving. It, it was almost one person who almost got emotional over it, and that just shows the impact that we have um, on the community. Um, you know, it's huge being able to give back, and you can't really put it into words, you know, when, when you're able to change somebody's life like that or, or have an impact on somebody's life like that. It just makes you want to do more. This is a no-brainer for me. You know, I'm, I'm happy, I'm thankful, and grateful to be able to come out and give some of my time to, you know, these people. Now the team will try to get things back on track on the court tonight. Game against the Hawks tips off at 7.30 at the AT&T Center. Go Spurs go. Time now, 442 and about 55 degrees out there. Still ahead, why families will pay a little more for Thanksgiving road trips this year. An XY family is being forced to adopt their biological twins that were born via surrogate. 
A Michigan family being forced to adopt their biological twins born via a surrogate. ABC's Ariel Rochef has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, fighting for their family. Since they got out of the NICU, we have had them with us every second. Um, but we are still not listed on the birth certificate as their parents. Tammy and Jordan Myers telling People Magazine that they had their babies Ames and Ellison via surrogate last January. But laws surrounding surrogacy in their home state of Michigan require families to legally adopt their own biological children. We had a meeting with um, an adoption agency to start the process and she looked at me point blank and said, well, you are not the mother. We have to go through background checks, a lot of rigorous things that you normally have to go through when you're doing an adoption process for uh, a child that's not your own. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have more on the Meyer struggle and their message to others exploring surrogacy. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. If you're driving far for the holiday this week, don't expect a break at the pump. However, 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris explains what happens now that President Biden is releasing 50 billion barrels of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. As families fill up their gas tanks, they're paying more for Thanksgiving road trips than they have in eight years. And the gas is higher than the kite. And it's gobbling up Rudy Sines' fixed income. The gas, that's uh, gold that I put in there, the gas. The average price of a gallon in San Antonio is 282. That's 72% higher than last year, mid-pandemic. This was 31.96. I got 11 gallons and I had about a quarter of a tank left. Right now it's costing about $45 to fill up the average SUV. For that same amount of money, you can feed a family of eight a Thanksgiving feast. That includes a 20 pound turkey and all. But prices at the pump have actually dropped five cents in the past week, partly in anticipation of President Biden's announcement he's tapping into strategic oil reserves to give consumers relief. Relief oil analyst Patrick DeHan calls underwhelming. I think we will see prices continue to inch down uh, across San Antonio. We could see the average fall uh, to maybe 275 or even 265 a gallon in the weeks ahead. And if OPEC responds by cutting its production, he says consumers could be worse off in the long run. Still, gas prices don't seem to be keeping travelers from filling up. Gotta have it no matter what. Because holiday visits with family can be priceless. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Oh, today and Sunday are going to be some of the busiest travel days we have seen in this country, and it seems like a couple years. I think so. I think a lot of people have plans to go visit family, some uh, who haven't seen them, like, you know, mm -hmm. since uh, before COVID. That's right. So including that and then, you know, all the kids being off of school. So. We wanted to let you know we're keeping an eye on the airports today as well. Uh, San Antonio International for any delay. So far, so good. Mike's here with more on our forecast. And I saw you kind of tweaking your, your models regarding when this rain mar might start to move into the area. If you are traveling today uh -huh. and, you know, say leaving now or in the next couple of hours, everything's going to be fine. Now, later on tonight, a couple of showers are going to try and move on in here. If you're uh, heading out tomorrow, in the morning hours, we'll still have some rain around here in the afternoon. It's going to be coming to an end. Also traveling over the weekend, next rain chance is going to be on Saturday. Sunday looks uh, rain free as of right now. Yesterday, yeah, kind of a starburst pattern out there. And, yeah, you know, initially you look at this picture and say a lot of blue skies, but there are a lot of high clouds. We're going to keep a lot of high clouds around all the way through the forecast. So in, in you know, in some cases it'll be considered they'll thicken up a little bit and it'll be more like mostly cloudy skies. Uh, right now we do still have some clouds out there and uh, dew point temperatures, the moisture in the atmosphere. Remember yesterday it was so dry, it was so cold down to 38 here in town, freezing in parts of the hill country. With those numbers, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere are up. 15, 20, 25 degrees compared to yesterday. So yes, the humidity has definitely come back in and is going to be sticking around throughout the rest of the day. Southeasterly winds going to be kind of on the breezy side and that'll be the situation into tonight. Now, we hours of the morning tomorrow. Here comes the front and the drier air and things have been 
past couple of days been really moving along a lot more quickly, so it's going to be moving on through here in the morning hours. The front will and whatever rain we get from it. And so by noon tomorrow, that dry air is going to start to work its way in here. We'll have northerly winds. It's going to be breezy tomorrow, and then the drier air continues to come on in here. Now that doesn't mean we're going to just clear out completely. Like I said, a lot of high clouds are going to be hanging around here. We keep a lot of clouds around today. And then going into tonight, a couple little showers going to try and pop up just with all this moisture ahead of the front. Then as the front moves through, we'll have a few showers. The majority of the rain is going to be looks like focused off to the east and to the northeast and uh, throughout the morning hours. Again, the front comes on through here. A couple of showers. It's not going to be a huge rain event, but some areas, especially off to the east, may see inch, inch and a half of rain. And then again, all that pushes down to the south throughout the day. There could be a couple of lingering uh, showers down to the southwest later on tomorrow evening and then going a little bit further into the future. We're just going to have some cloudy skies around here on Friday. Most of the cloudy skies, those high clouds, and then we go into the weekend that next chance for some rain. And it's this low out here to the west of us, which, you know, the front's going to bring the rain tomorrow morning. Then that low is going to kind of throw some energy in here, and that's going to give us the chance of rain then by Saturday. And it's going to stay on the cool side. So even though it's mild today, last minute trip to the grocery store, you might, except for this morning, you might be able to get away without a jacket. 70 at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature going to make it up to 73. And then also it's going to be on the breezy side. A couple of showers tonight and then tomorrow and temperatures are going to be dropping down throughout the day. So we'll hit our high probably uh, right after midnight in the wee hours of the morning. This time tomorrow, and then temperatures will drop into the uh, low 60s and upper 50s throughout the afternoon. Very breezy rain primarily first portion of the day. Mm -hmm. 60 Friday, 58 Saturday, kind of a damp day on Saturday. Good day to maybe put up Christmas decorations yeah. if you haven't yet yes. inside. Yes. And then uh, 65 on Sunday. Wow, another string of uh, cold mornings around there. Yeah, yeah, pretty chilly. Not as cold as yesterday, mm -hmm. but still, you know, jacket weather, but good. Huh. Bigger ratings. Are you jogging your <laughs> turkey no, off like already? A no, a turkey just, you know, kind yeah. of get you going there. So. Okay, I love it. All right, 451, about 55 degrees. <laughs> and still ahead, Marvel debuts its latest series on Disney Plus, and we're going to tell you what's hitting theaters this Thanksgiving weekend. Here are your lottery numbers: Pick three, zero five five, Fireball four, Daily four, one nine nine one, Fireball three, Cash five, one thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, thirty four. And your Mega Million, 7, 24, 54, 57, 58, Mega Ball 6, Mega Plier 3. Good luck. The latest on what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Life with magic. The magical world of Encanto awaits. The new animated Disney musical out today is about a Colombian family with magical powers. Jessica Darrow plays one of the sisters, Luisa. Her power is super strength. And she tells me she definitely considers Luisa a new Disney princess. So she's most certainly a heroine in so many ways, and I think that's what makes a princess. I feel like Disney princesses are often like associated with like like romantic love interests, and there is none of that in this film. Encanto is out today, only in theaters. Can you keep a secret? Father, son, and the house of Gucci. Opening in the theater next door to Encanto is a film about another powerful family. House of Gucci is about greed, fashion, and ultimately murder. Regina Nascott executive produced it, telling me she's been trying to make it for 20 years because she loves the Gucci brand. Beautiful clothes and, and fun. I love fashion. So uh, I've always loved Gucci. And uh, Gucci has a magical name to me. This is the first Christmas we've had together in years. I love you guys. Out today streaming, it's the latest Marvel I'm series. Hawkeye stars time. Jeremy Renner, continuing his bow and arrow based character from the Avengers film. Hawkeye. That's on Disney+. Disney Plus. Plus. Meanwhile, Adele's latest album wasn't nominated for a Grammy. It came out too late, but she's already a huge winner. Billboard says it took just three days for 30 to become the best-selling album of the year. And happy birthday today to Katherine Heigl, the Emmy-winning actress turning 43, while Modern Family star Sarah Hyland is 31. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 456, about 55 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, officials say be prepared for travel delays and a spike in COVID numbers. But that's not stopping millions of people who are flying today ahead of Thanksgiving. And we'll tell you about a new feature that lets you listen to music tied to your favorite Netflix shows. That's coming up in your Morning Tech Bites.
And ahead on GMSA at 6, escaping homelessness isn't as easy as getting a job. Now find out what's keeping those who are working to do better on the streets. And checking trans guide, Stevens in the studio. We're going to try to find out what's going on here at uh, 10 East at Loop 1604. At least that's the label on the camera. We will try to find out uh, what's going on in that area. As we look, so we have a number of vehicles with flashing lights out there right now at 457. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The holiday travel rush is here, meaning longer lines at the airports. What this means for airlines and for you. Coming up. Hey, we're going to check on the roads in a minute with our Stephen Cavazos outside with live cam. Nowhere near as chilly as it was yesterday morning, but some more cold mornings are on the way. Another front and a chance at a shower or storm. Good morning, everybody. It's Thanksgiving Eve. That's Wednesday, November 24th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Maybe you're up early getting those last minute Thanksgiving supplies, I guess, just to get ready to make that meal for tomorrow. A lot of people have some errands to run today. Mm -hmm. And let's go ahead and check in with Mike to see how your errand running weather will look like. Well, well, if you're heading out early, early this morning, maybe you still having to go to work or, you know, <laughs> get into the grocery stores as they open up at the first thing there. Um, a little bit of fog. That's all we're going to be dealing with. And where there's fog, there could be, you know, damp spot here and there. But if you are traveling today, uh, it looks pretty good in and around the state as far as any rain. Now, tonight, different story. More on that coming up. 55 degrees. Yeah, we are almost 15 above, uh, 15, almost 20 above where we were yesterday. The dew point, that bottom number there, has really come up as well. Not much of a breeze and that's why with all that extra humidity we are seeing a couple of patches of fog here and there. 73 for a high temperature today so it is going to be on the mild side and then that's all going to be changing later on tonight. So as far as the aquifer it did drop down three tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading. Allergens mold is on the low side. Speaking of fog, like I said, just one or two little patches are showing up as of right now. Uh, head up uh, probably in towards San Marcos. There's a little bit there and some around Castro. So again, not much, just kind of be on the lookout here and there. And otherwise, yeah, good looking, uh, good looking day today, although it is going to be on the cloudy side, warm and humid. And then overnight tonight, we're going to start to see, or actually later on this evening, maybe eight, nine o'clock, a couple of stray sprinkles here and there, and then more rain overnight. And the first part of the day tomorrow, front's going to move through early. It's going to bring an end to the rain about midday, right around noon or so. And then it's going to be windy and temperatures are going to be dropping down throughout the afternoon tomorrow. So we'll start in the about mid 60s this time tomorrow morning and then drop into the upper 50s by the afternoon and then Friday mostly cloudy It's going to be on the chilly side and about the same thing over the weekend, although we will have a few showers on Saturday. Closer look at all of the long Thanksgiving forecast coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. Any big problems on the roads? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, this is not the way anyone really wants to start their morning with a mess like this off I 10 East at Loop 1604. Let's take a closer look and see what our friends at Transcott are showing us through this shot. Uh, we can see that we do have some first responders out there on the scene. Uh, what we're learning is that this is actually an 18 wheeler that rolled over along the Axis Road earlier this morning. In fact, our producer Hardy said he lives close by and heard some sort of noise out there a little bit earlier on. But uh, let's take a look and see how that's impacting traffic. It is a little bit early, so let's take you right to the map. Right there on 1604, we are seeing a small buildup of yellow in those lanes of uh, 1604, but that crash is detected right along I-10 eastbound. So if you're going out maybe towards Seguin later, make sure you're planning an alternative route or just uh, give those first responders plenty of room this morning. But again, that is along the Axis Road. Wider look at the map shows that we are still pretty much, though, thankfully off to a green start as we're inching closer to the Thanksgiving holiday. So this is a great way to start the day. But again, we're going to keep an eye on that crash right now. If you are traveling out towards the uh, we'll take a look at those outbound times. But if you're coming in uh, 29 minutes on I-10 to the downtown San Antonio area, 25 from 35 in New Braunfels and 26 coming in from 281 and Bulverde. One last look here at this crash. I-10 East at Loop 1604 is a shot at Transguide. We'll continue to see how that impacts at Morning Drive. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, sir. New this morning, a San Antonio police officer is in the hospital after a crash on the city's south side. All right, Jonathan Goto joins us live. And Jonathan, what have you been able to learn so far? Good morning, Stephanie. Yes, I'm located at the corner of Southeast Military and Roosevelt where that crash happened. 
We've learned that an arrest has been made in relation to this crash. But let's take a look at that, what that scene looked like earlier this morning. Police responded to the 1100 block of Southeast Military in Roosevelt, an intersection on the city's south side at 235 this morning. They say a woman driving a pickup truck was heading westbound on Southeast Military when she hit a street crimes officer traveling southbound on Roosevelt. Now, police tell us the woman was detained in suspicion of driving under the influence. A field sobriety test was done at the scene. Now, we do know the officer was taken to Mission Trails Hospital and is expected to be okay. Reporting on the south side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you. Now to the Thanksgiving travel rush. Airports expect to see the largest surge in travelers since the start of the pandemic this week. Millions are already hitting the road ahead of the holiday, but troubles at the nation's airports and a rise in COVID cases are raising concerns. ABC's M. Wynn has details. This morning, an early glimpse at the frustration some Americans will face when they join the Thanksgiving travel rush, like these long lines of cars outside the airport in Phoenix last night. The TSA expects the number of travelers will reach pre-pandemic highs this week. More than 2 million people are expected to fly today alone. Airlines are preparing for most planes to be at full capacity as the federal mask mandate fuels an increase in mid-air altercations. We're seeing unruly behavior on a rise, so we want to make sure that we're working um, and communicating effectively, but also understanding that there's mandates. The travel rush comes as the airline industry struggles to recover from a worker shortage. Both the TSA and the airlines say they've bulked up staffing and insist they're ready. And now new concern about the holiday fueling a surge in COVID cases. New infections are up 42% nationwide in the last month. New York is now averaging its highest number of new cases since February. And in Colorado, hospitals in the Denver area are 95% full. Emergency rooms are routinely diverting patients because they simply don't have the capacity to take care of people who need help. Now back to the airports. Here's another worry for some travelers. Police in Portland, Oregon are now warning about thieves stealing catalytic converters from parked cars at the airport. They say the thieves are reselling the metal inside. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, a convicted thief with a long history of accepting payments for work he never completed is back in jail. 49-year-old Carlos Elizondo charged in connection to two felony theft cases. The case that defenders have told you about him before they've investigated him and his former company Lawn Enforcement Rescue Services. New charges stem from two cases where Elizondo allegedly accepted the money to build the deck but never finished the job. His bond is set at $13,000. Higher prices this season, not stopping Meals on Wheels from delivering Thanksgiving to the community tomorrow. Prep work is underway from helping out the Royal Humanist Thanksgiving dinner to doing their no more normal holiday delivery efforts. The meals given out will include 123 turkeys. That's nearly 2,000 pounds. The meals also include, include 3,500 slices of pumpkin pie, green beans, mashed potatoes, stuffing, and yams. Volunteer spots are full, but monetary donations are always welcome. A link to donate is on our website at kset.com. Just about 508, about 55 degrees. And still ahead, why Apple is delaying a feature that would add your driver's license to your iPhone or Apple Watch. Up next, details on the latest research from Metro Health on COVID booster shots and their effectiveness here at home. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting the morning not as cold as yesterday. We're at 55 degrees, but we're expecting things to change starting tomorrow. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. 5-11, a new study shows when it comes to all adults eligible to get COVID boosters, the timing could not be better. At last count, Metro Health says more than 207,000 people in Bear County have gotten their booster shots. Texas Biomed tested patients before their first and second doses and again after one month, three months and six months. The study shows women have higher, uh, higher antibody levels than men and men also typically have lower antibody levels than younger people. They had a faster rate of decline as compared to people who never were exposed to COVID-19. I think COVID is going to be a part of our life now. It's going to mutate and it's going to be different for all of us, but we need it. Researchers say the data suggests there may be more boosters to come along with the need to update vaccines in the future. Could see it happening. 512 about 55 degrees.
and we'll tell you about a new feature on Spotify that lets you access music from your favorite Netflix shows. Plus, Microsoft celebrates 20 years of Xbox with an interactive museum. Fragrance Destination. I don't just play someone brainy on TV. I'm an actual neuroscientist, and I love the science behind Nariva Plus. Unlike ordinary memory supplements, Nariva Plus fuels six key indicators of brain performance. More brain performance? Yes, please. Nariva, think bigger. This is the dimension of imagination. Welcome back. Apple is delaying a feature that will add your driver's license to your iPhone or Apple Watch. ABC's Moto Kassar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple is pushing back the release of its digital ID cards. The plan is to allow users to store their driver's license on their Apple wallet and easily scan at airports, retailers, and venues. The feature is now expected to debut next year. It's not clear what caused the delay. Next, the new Netflix hub on Spotify. It offers fans a centralized place to find soundtracks, playlists, and podcasts for their favorite shows and movies on Netflix. The expanding offerings already include material from popular shows like Bridgerton, Squid Game and The Crown. And Microsoft is celebrating the 20th anniversary of Xbox with an interactive museum. The virtual world allows you to roam through the console's history. It also goes through some of the product's low points, such as Microsoft's ill-fated attempt to acquire Nintendo 21 years ago. It's all history. Those are your tech fights. Have a great day. 516. And flashing lights again at I-10 mm. East and Loop 1604. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, they've been there for quite a while, Mark and Stephanie. Here is the shot from Transguide again. I-10 East at Loop 1604. Very dark out there. It's difficult to make out exactly what we're seeing, but we can tell you that our friends at Transguide have informed us that this is an 18-wheeler that has rolled over in that area. Now, we are seeing a few wreckers out there, so hopefully we will see this moved out of the way within the next few minutes or so before it gets a little bit busier on the roadways. But let's right now see how that's impacting the lanes, taking you right to the map. Earlier, we talked about how there was a buildup along 1604. It looks like that has since cleared out, but we still do have that crash based off what we were seeing from the shot at Transguide. I-10 eastbound at loop 1604, so be on the lookout for that. Again, that is it. That is on the access road, so hopefully that won't be impacting anybody's morning commute. But let's go ahead and take a look around some construction spots here because we do want to remind you all the way up over here, northwest side, there is some still some bridge widening construction happening for the 1604 expansion project. It's been going on throughout the entire month of November. We're about maybe a little less than a week away before it actually wraps up. It's led to the full alternating closure of the turnarounds at Kyle Seal Parkway in both directions. And again, that is going to be wrapping up on November 30th. Keep in mind, this starts from 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon, but sometimes those tech side crews do get a head start. So we start to see a little bit of a build up there. But keep in mind, uh, it is starting. It is a holiday, so hopefully we'll be seeing less people out on the roads and we won't be seeing a lot of impact when it comes to the traffic. Seeing a little bit of a build up there along 1604. 1604. We'll find out what's going on there. But for now, this seems to be the problem this morning. Hopefully we'll find a resolution soon. Guys. That's good. Thank you, Stephen. I defer to our resident jogger over there. This picture says <laughs> beautiful day for a three mile walk. Yes. Yes. Yesterday yes. was. Yes, it was. Wow. Okay. It was absolutely beautiful. Well, not great today. A little humid. Uh, we could still take it. Okay. It's okay. not like the middle of the summer. But a three mile walk is just a warm up for you, right? <laughs> Well, um, you know, that's funny you say that. Sometimes I'll go walk with my husband if we have time, and then I'll go for my run. You just leave him in the dust and but, just go well, running no, he's, off. He's and you're, are you doing the turkey drive tomorrow? You know, I think I am. Okay. But it's going to be rainy, right? There's going to be some rain around tomorrow, uh, tomorrow in the morning hours, because what time does that start? About, uh, 830. about 830? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's still going to be some uh, leftover showers around here, so it could be damp if you are going to be doing that tomorrow. Today, there's really nothing going on. If you are traveling today, pretty good weather. There's
there's a hint of fog here or there, but not really a big deal. Temperatures yesterday did make it up to 71, 73 Hondo and 80 was uh, one of the warm spots there in Catula. About the same situation today, maybe a little bit uh, milder in spots. 75 Stone Oak and 73 here in town. Randolph's going to be topping off right around 75 degrees. We've got, obviously, we have a much, much warmer start. Temperatures are up about 15, almost 20 degrees compared to yesterday. Yesterday, of course, we got down to 38 here in town and some freezing readings in parts of the Hill Country, even northern Bear County. Today, we're starting off in the mid and upper 50s and low 60s. A lot of high clouds. So you saw in that uh, KSAC Connect picture where some of those high clouds moved in. They were sticking around throughout the day yesterday. And we're going to keep these high clouds around here, all this moisture coming in from the Pacific. And this will be the situation, the high clouds all the way through the weekend, basically. Uh, today, we are going to keep cloudy skies. Uh, the high clouds going to get thicker at times. And this model, I think, kind of hurries the uh, rain along a little bit, but we'll have a couple of showers around the area later on tonight and then in the wee hours tomorrow morning. And the front's going to be moving its way on through here. And uh, by, say, late morning, most of the rain should be out of here. So still, there's a chance that we are going to see some of those showers if you are heading off to the, uh, the turkey trot tomorrow morning and then throughout the afternoon. Not bad. Actually, a little bit of sunshine is going to try and squeak on through some of those clouds, and then we're just going to keep cloudier skies around here going on into Friday. So the front's going to move through. We've got a lot of humidity right now. It's going to knock the humidity out of here throughout the day, and it's going to be very, very dry air. Still have cloudy skies. It's not like this is going to be clearing everything on out of here like some fronts do. Humidity tries to come back in here over the weekend. And then another little bit of a front by late in the weekend in toward Monday. Here's a little longer range computer model. And again, this one is that broad brush. So it just kind of shows where the chance of rain is going into uh, the day tomorrow. Clears on out of here. And then as the next batch of energy moves on in, that's going to give us another chance for some rain by Saturday. And still going to stay cool. So mild today, but then jackets all the way through the weekend. 70 at noon today. Mostly cloudy skies. High temperature again up to 73. Going to be breezy today. And then we'll have a couple of showers around tonight overnight first part of the day tomorrow and temperatures will start off very very mild it's going to be mild in the morning uh, then throughout the day once that front comes through breezy conditions and i think 60 upper 50s by late in the day uh, tomorrow 60 for a high on friday upper 50s on saturday with some showers and lows are going to be in the mid 40s except for tomorrow morning kind of chilly mm -hmm. yeah indoor decorations Good idea. Yes. Thanks, Thank, Mike. Thank you, Mike. 522, about 55 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, the stars of the upcoming movie 8-Bit Christmas share their favorite Yuletide gifts, plus remembering Frederick Mercury uh, 30 years after his death. Pick three numbers, 055, Fireball 4. Your daily four numbers, 1991, Fireball 3. Cash 5, 1, 13, 14, 16, 34. And your Mega Million, 7, 24, 54, 57, 58, Mega Ball 6, Mega Plier 3. Good luck. Today's entertainment news and highlights include a new Christmas movie and a sad anniversary for music fans. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. A maze of rubber wiring and electronic intelligence so advanced it was deemed not a video game, but an 8-bit entertainment system. No Nintendo in my house. I second that. Looks like a no-go on Nintendo. 8-Bit Christmas follows a boy's quest in the late 1980s for that holy grail of holiday gifts, a Nintendo. Steve Zahn and June Diane Raphael, who play his parents, remember their own childhood Christmas favorites. The first Atari, 2600, after my mind was blown by by Pong. I'm getting the American Girl doll, which I campaigned for for an entire calendar year and then and then got. I like to enjoy myself and what better uh, way to do it than, than, than on stage in front of 300,000 people? Wednesday marks 30 years since the world lost Freddie Mercury. His estate is marking the anniversary with a classic clip montage honoring the Queen frontman, who was inducted posthumously into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Mercury would have been 75 this week. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 
and time now, it's 526 and about 55 degrees out there. Still ahead on ZMSA, a wave of smash and grab crimes like this one, plaguing upscale stores into major cities. Why law enforcement say it's happening now. Plus, we're going to tell you how much more you'll be paying for items at the Dollar Tree thanks to a price increase. Plus, you could take home a furry pet just in time for Thanksgiving holiday. We'll check in with Animal Defense League coming up. And ahead on GMSA at 6, President Biden considering another vaccine mandate that could go into effect at the beginning of the new year. We're going to tell you who it would affect. Making headlines this morning, authorities across the nation a warning of an increase in smash and grab style crimes and why they're happening. A man is in the hospital this morning after he attempted to cross the street. Details on this incident coming up next. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting today a lot warmer than we were yesterday. But if you do not like this weather, just stick around because things will change later tonight. Hey, it's Texas, right? Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 24th. Thanks for joining us today. I'm kind of looking forward to the weather change, you know, so it could feel like Thanksgiving. Yes, the holiday just about here. Final preparations underway. And Mike Ostrage is here with more on a forecast. And you guys had Omar a week ago start talking about a chance of some rain and mm -hmm. maybe a change in temperatures for Thanksgiving Day itself. Yeah, and it's going to be nice because in the afternoon then, you know, it, it, when it's cooler outside and you have just stuffed yourself, it, it kind of, you know, helps to ease the, the pain when you're, you know, you've eaten so much and it's a little cooler outside instead of being mild. Anyway, it's very mild this morning and uh, we have temperatures that are well up into the, the 50s. We're anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees warmer than what it was yesterday at this time. That number has gone up as well. The dew point temperature, not much of a breeze out there and uh, all, all around the metropolitan area. We're in the low to mid 50s as of right now, 52, both Kelly and Rand. And off hint of fog around Castorville, a hint over there by uh, Port SA and then heading up just to the north of New Braunfels right around San Marcos. There may be a little bit of fog. It's not widespread at all, but just, you know, in a low spot and watch out for a little a uh, little bit of that mold is on the low side and throughout the rest of today we're going to make it up to 73 for a high now there's the chance for a couple of showers then tonight some of those are going to start to kind of pop up around here and then especially overnight and into tomorrow we will have those morning showers even a couple of thunderstorms around here the front moves through so in the afternoon we'll start off in the morning in the mid 60s but by the afternoon late afternoon i think we're 60 58 degrees or so and then breezy on Friday. It's going to be breezy tomorrow as well and only 60 for a high temperature with the plenty of clouds around here. Boy, after today, you're really going to need your jacket all the way through the weekend. Another rain chance, though, after tomorrow. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, got that big problem out there still, right? Yeah, we still do, Mike. As we take a look right now, Trans Guide shows us uh, we still see the same progress out there off I-10 East at Loop 1604. Let's take a closer look and see what our shot at Trans Guide looks like this morning. Now, we do have a few wreckers out there. That's because an 18-wheeler rolled over in this area. Uh, now, as we take a closer look, we also see the silhouette of a person walking through there. Thankfully, this is on the Axis Road, but of course, you always want want to make sure that you are being extra cautious this morning, especially when we have incidents like this that have occurred uh, on the roadways. So let's take you to the map and see if we're seeing any impact on the lanes right now. Still, thankfully, very green on the screen, but that rollover is right there along I-10 East at loop 1604. So we will continue to watch that throughout the morning. Hopefully more people will be staying at home today for the Thanksgiving holiday and this won't impact anybody's drive time. But we will, of course, keep you all those updates uh, right here on GMSA. Wider look at the map shows it's pretty quiet. Uh, we've not seen a lot of issues out there this morning. Looks like another crash popped up just off of I-10. We'll find out what's going on over there. But for now, these inbound times, if you plan on coming into San Antonio from any of our neighboring communities, it's still green across the board. We have 25 minutes from Bernie and I-10, 18 minutes from Highway 90 and Castroville. And if you're coming in from 35 and Lytle, not looking bad there, just 16 minutes at this hour. Let's take one last look at Transguide. It looks like we do have these wreckers out there. Make sure that you are planning your alternative routes. But again, this is on the Axis Road. We'll see how that impacts the drive time and we'll have more, more gas prices coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police responded to a crash on the city's west side overnight. We know at least one person was taken to the hospital. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live and good morning, Jonathan. Do we know what happened there? Good morning, Stephanie. Yes, police tell us a man was attempting to cross the street when he was hit by a vehicle. But this is what we know so far. Police tell us he's believed to be in a man in his 20s. He was crossing the street from a Walgreens parking lot. 
This all happening on the 100 block of General McMullen Drive and West Commerce. That's on the city's west side. Now, they say a woman driving an SUV hit the man. They tell us he was unconscious when they arrived, but EMS, EMS did quickly arrive on scene. Now, it's important to mention the driver of the SUV did stop to help. Now, police say there was no signs of intoxication, therefore no charges are pending. The victim was taken to Universal City Hospital and is expected to be okay. Reporting Jonathan Cotto. Case at 12 News. Nathan, thank you. The video is everywhere these days. Several smash and grab crimes happening in a number of American cities over the past few weeks. CNN's Brett Conway breaks down some of the latest grabs and why we might be seeing more of these cases. You're looking at a smash and grab. This kind of thing has happened in several big cities recently. Groups of thieves ripping off upscale stores. In LA, Monday, at least 18 people broke into a Nordstrom. In the San Francisco Bay Area Sunday, a group of thieves swarmed a mall, smashing jewelry cases with hammers. East of the city on Saturday, a mob of some 80 people ransacked Nordstrom there. And like ski masks, crowbars, night, like a bunch of weapons. People had boxes, bags, oh yeah, oh yeah, it was a crazy scene. Other San Francisco stores got hit Friday, including Louis Vuitton, Burberry, Bloomingdale's, Walgreens, and cannabis dispensaries. They are groups of people coming to target communities. We will be prepared to address it. In suburban Chicago last week, 14 people barged into a Louis Vuitton store. Police say eight people hit this Louis Vuitton, also in Chicago, last month. Multiple cases, one big question. What is going on? Security experts say there could be a number of issues at play. There's the law enforcement component. These kinds of crimes aren't always a priority, and thieves may face few consequences. Then there's the timing. Stores stock up for holidays. More merchandise means more opportunity. And experts say once something is stolen, there are several ways to easily sell it. We've allowed criminal networks to create a business model selling stolen goods online, and that is what's put this problem on steroids. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Unruly passengers prepare to pay up. The FAA just announced fines. It's levied against disruptive passengers. The agency says just eight passengers face fines totaling $161,000. That's the third highest total since the FAA enacted its zero tolerance policy. One of the passengers accounts for a quarter of that total. A passenger fined almost $41,000 for bringing their own alcohol aboard a Southwest Airlines flight, then sexually assaulting a flight attendant who tried to stop them from drinking. After that, the passengers allegedly went to the airplane's bathroom to smoke pot. Newest fines come as the airline industry prepares to handle an estimated 20 million travelers over the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. The Pentagon now wants to streamline the way it looks into UFO reports. The Defense Department plans to create a centralized group to handle all reports of UFO sightings. The group will standardize the process for reporting those incidents in the military and other government branches. Earlier this year, the U.S. Intelligence released a report about more than 140 sightings, mostly by Navy pilots. Officials did not find evidence of anything out of this world or major advancement in technology by other countries, but the report concluded those objects most of them unexplained may pose a national security threat. Last night, NASA launched a spacecraft on a mission to smash into an asteroid and test whether it would be possible to knock a speeding space rock off course if one were to threaten Earth. The DART spacecraft, short for Double Asteroid Redirection Test, lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. It's a $300 million experiment with echoes of the Bruce Willis movie Armageddon. All goes well in September of next year. It'll slam head on to Dimorphos, an asteroid 525 feet across at 15,000 miles per hour. NASA says it won't destroy the asteroid, just give it a little nudge. The asteroid is not a threat to Earth, but this gives scientists a way to measure the effectiveness of this collision. And time now, it's 538 and it's 56 degrees out there. Your favorite items at Dollar Tree will no longer cost just a dollar. We'll tell you how much more you'll have to pay. And coming up next, we're going to have some big updates when it comes to donations in our No Shave November campaign. Details next. Outside with live cam this morning. Hopefully it's going to be a nice day. We do have weather changes on the way for Thanksgiving itself. We'll check in with Mike Ostrage coming up. As Stephen is back with a look at your morning commute if you do have to work today, and that is quite a few of you. There's Ted Lasso.
<laughs> or Hank. <laughs> Hank, Hank, Hank. Hank. Yeah. Got Hank. The beards have come in strong this month as we make our way through another very successful no shave November. And Stephen Cavazos joins us now with an update on how things are going. Good hey. morning, guys. Hey. You know, I, we just saw that Freddie Mercury uh, story as well earlier in the newscast. I'm hoping maybe by next Tuesday it can grow in that way. Uh. You think? <laughs> you want the Freddie you, Mercury you up time. here? <laughs> we got time. We got time. You know, maybe I'll have a stash by the end of the month. But Mark said things have been going really, really well. In fact, we are currently ranked number two in the country. Team KSAT has raised close to $11,000. We have exceeded Yay. our goal and all the guys have been bringing in the funds, sharing why this is so important to them. As we've been talking about this throughout the entire month of November, cancer is universal, but so is that compassion. Here why our John Paul Barajas is participating. No shave November. People participate for so many reasons and they're all great reasons. I'm lucky and blessed to say that I have not had any immediate or close relatives um, suffer from any type of cancer. That being said, I have plenty of friends whose families, cousins, parents have suffered. And so this being my first year participating, my first opportunity to participate, thanks to KSAT, I am putting away the razor for No Shave November. I think beard's coming in okay. Uh, but the main reason was I'm just living by the words that my grandpa always told us, which is it's nice to be nice, meaning it feels good to do the right thing. So this is me doing what I can any little bit helps so hopefully we raise plenty of money great message jp now for more information just head to ksat.com slash no shave there you will also find a link to donate to team ksat and of course we still got about what five days left so we're yeah. going to continue to share those updates mm -hmm. right here on gmsa and thankfully again we rank number two in the country uh close to eleven thousand dollars i just checked right now about 70 bucks away from it so we, can hit, we could hit that mark today. And that correct awesome. me if I'm wrong, isn't Mike in like the top five Mike, in the country? Uh, Mike is in, yeah, you're in the top five of the country, Mike. I just checked that as well. Uh, you have a little over $2,000, a little wow. bit close to three. So, you know, we got to hand it out to all the community that's continuing yes. to support that and Thank Team you. Silver Fox. He's number five. <laughs> He's number five. <laughs> in yeah. the nation. In the nation. Yeah. yeah. It's our viewers, though. Yeah. yeah. He's preparing his much. Oscar acceptance speech <laughs> as we yeah. speak. Uh, thank you Thanks very much, guys. Stephen. Ooh. All right. It's been a great month. And again, we'd love to pad that total uh, because everybody is a winner for sure. 544, about 56 degrees. And coming up next, we're going to check in with the Animal Defense League about a pet who wants to go home with you today. I thought you were going to have a stare down with the camera. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh right in the mouth. That's what happens when you laugh when a dog is scared. Exactly. Better her than me. <laughs> Michelle's here from the Animal Defense League. And who is little Mr. This Kissy? This is Linus. He is one of our senior babies. So he's available for adoption at our Nacogdoches campus. He's 11 years old. Please. He is? And has so much spunk. Yes. I would never guess that. I know. He's amazing. Is he's he really a, so sweet. A little bit of Jack Russell in him or we, something, maybe? We have him as Terrier mix. Okay. That could mean a lot. But yeah, I definitely see a lot of Jack Russell in there. <laughs> all right. What y'all got going on? So this week, um, we are really pushing adoptions in general. Honestly, we are at capacity. Get everyone home for the holidays. Happy Thanksgiving for everyone. Um, but we are also doing a off-site adoption event at North Park Subaru this weekend. So we are going to be at North Park Subaru from 10 to 3, and we are going to have Santa Paws there for complimentary photos oh. um, to kick off the holidays. Perfect. Yes. And you have your red collar, so you'll be all set for exactly. that. Exactly. So, well, if you'd like more information on this little guy and all the events they have going on there at the Animal Defense League, remember, you adopt one, you help out two, because that opens up space for another one. And we need he the space. Head on over, <laughs> 1100 Nacogdoches or the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. Yeah. And in your morning consumer headlines, it's known for its $1 price tag for all products, but not anymore. The bargain chain Dollar Tree raising its prices for the first time in three decades, and surprisingly, it's not due to inflation. By the beginning of 2022, items will be $1.25. Dollar Tree says the price hike will give them more flexibility to bring back customer favorites and also introduce new items. The company also says the increase will help with freight and distribution costs as well as wage increases. Just like everything on store shelves these days, your favorite bowl of cereal could cost more next year. According to one regional wholesale supplier, General Mills is raising prices on hundreds of products. Popular cereals like Cheerios, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and Lucky Charms are included in the increase. The supplier says prices are expected to go up around 20% starting in mid-January. But 
It doesn't sound like a lot, but it adds up very quickly. Yes, it does, especially if you're a huge cereal fan. And there are a lot of cereal fans watching right now. Let's see how things are looking on the roads with our traffic expert Stephen Cavazos. We still have this problem out there off I-10 East at Loop 1604. We've been talking about it throughout the morning. An 18-wheeler rolled over in this area and we've had those wreckers out there for quite a while. Keep in mind, this is not something easy to clear out, so it could take a little while before we see some resolution. Uh, but uh, thankfully, it's not causing so much of an impact because this is, again, on the access road. This is going out towards the game. So let's go ahead and take you right to the map and see what things are looking like at this hour. Thankfully, still pretty much green in those lanes of 1604 and I-10. Now keep in mind, those are in those eastbound lanes, uh, but uh, thankfully we have not seen so much of an impact when it comes to that drive time. Let's take a wider look at the map because thankfully it is still pretty quiet, but it looks like we have another issue that popped up there along uh, 1604 and I-10 over on the northwest side. We'll find out what's going on there in just a moment, but let's go ahead and take you to those gas prices because we know some people may be doing their road trips today and they want to know what they're going to be paying at the pump. Right now, as of today, AAA does report in Bear County the average gas price 283 around the state. We're looking at 299 and around the country 339. Now AAA also does report that the crude oil prices were at $80 a barrel. Now they've jumped down to $70 per barrel. Keep in mind that makes about 50 to 60% of what people are actually paying at the gas pump. However, they say until oil production ramps back up to pre pandemic levels, that dip in the crude oil prices may only be temporary, but uh, thankfully it's just a small dip right now in those average gas prices. Prices. Let's take one last look at this shot at Transguide I-10 East at Loop 604. We're going to continue to watch these roads throughout the morning, guys. All right. Thank you, Stephen. We've you had know, more. Yes, sir. No, I was going to say, just talking about thinking about groceries. Yeah, I mean, yeah. even, you know, a couple of items. Mm -hmm. True. You know, it's 50 bucks or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it is. Yeah. We've had some KSAT Connect uh, submissions lately. Uh, people obsessed with those those streaky clouds in the sky lately, Mike. Hey, they, are, they are cool looking. You know, mm -hmm. it's all that moisture upstairs in the atmosphere. And then you get uh, right there. It looks like well, about sunset or so. And uh, yeah, it's awfully pretty. Yeah, it does kind of look like this watercolor painting or something. So thank you very much for that. Keep those pictures coming all weekend long as well. I'd love to show them off. And uh, well, nothing really going on in this picture. Uh, we do have very mild temperatures. We're uh, anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees above what it was yesterday. Of course, you know, think back, we hit 38 for low, the coldest we'd been here in town officially since way back about the 3rd of March. And then uh, Balverde, Bernie Stage, Comfort Kerrville all hit freezing yesterday. Nothing near that today, almost twice as uh, as warm. And the humidity is also up. These dew point temperatures are up a good uh, 15, 20, 25 degrees compared to what it was yesterday. And that's going to be changing, though, because we have that front moving through tonight. That is going to pull in some drier air. Now, it's not as though a lot of times you think of fronts coming through and it just sweeps everything on out. That's not going to be the situation because we do have a lot of moisture coming in here from the Pacific Ocean. And so that's going to keep a lot of clouds around. Now, throughout the rest of today, I think this month model maybe kind of hurries things along as far as uh, a couple little scattered rain showers around here. But by this evening, we will have a few of them sort of ahead of that front and then overnight and into the early morning hours tomorrow. If you had to kind of point in a direction where the majority of the rain or potentially heavier showers would be, that's going to be further up to the north, up there around uh, maybe San Marcos, Austin, and could see inch, couple of inches further up to the northeast. And it could have a, you know a decent shower here, but again, that would be the area, the general area where the majority of it would be. So this is going to be in the morning hours right around this time as the front is moving on through here with the rain. Then it moves out fairly quickly throughout the afternoon. A mm, couple of uh, peaks of sunshine squeezing on through tomorrow afternoon. Don't count on a whole lot again because of that that high cloud cover. And there you can see some of those clouds and this flow coming in here from the, uh, the southwest. So again, that sticks around. And then there's more uh, disturbances out here, which are going to keep rain chances on or throw rain chances, I shouldn't say, back into the picture than by Saturday. So today, 70 at noon, most of the cloudy skies, actually a little bit above normal by noon, and then we're going to end up at uh, 73. Most of the cloudy is going to be breezy today, wind out of the southeast. So that continues to pull that moisture on in here. A couple of showers going to be uh, popping up later on this evening, overnight, and the first part of the day tomorrow. Front moves on through here. We're going to be very warm and humid out ahead of the front, and then drier and cooler. Temperatures will drop throughout the afternoon, and it's going to be windy tomorrow. Going for 58 by late afternoon here in town. 60s uh, Friday, 58 again on Saturday, mid-60s. Lots of clouds. It is going to be cool jacket weather. 
great Thanksgiving weather. You know, open yeah. up the windows. Some outside. of those mornings are chilly enough to leave the wine or the beer on the back porch. And That's keep it coolish. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. So. Not the leftovers, but don't, the drinks. Yeah, right. Don't leave your turkey out there because then the, you know, no. the possum right. will get it or something. Yeah, so. and the possum will get it. <laughs> you sound like the voice of experience. Is there something you want to tell us? Or okay. Or raccoons. raccoons. Yes. Okay. Yes. We'll have more on GMSA at 9 as we debrief Mike about his Thanksgiving tragedy. Right now, <laughs> no, that's number. never happened. I'm just saying, just watch out for the possums. Yeah, it's true. All right, we're canceling this segment. We will not see Mike at 9. <laughs> Pick three number 055 Fireball 4, daily four numbers 1991 Fireball 3. Cash 5, 1, 13, 14, 16, 34. And your Mega Million, 7, 24, 54, 57, 58, Mega Ball 6, Mega Flyer 3. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the great Thanksgiving rush is underway. This morning, we'll tell you how airports are bracing for pre-pandemic travel levels and what President Biden is doing to help bring down those high gas prices and when it might start to have an impact. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Ahead in our next hour, GMSA, more jobs coming to Texas. We've got details on Governor Abbott's plans to bring a major tech company to the Austin area. But straight ahead on GMSA, train hits a man police say was waiting on the tracks where this happened and the condition of the man coming up. And checking TransGuide, this is our big incident this morning right now on TransGuide at 10 at 16.04. Stephen is tracking that coming up right here on GMSA. A San Antonio police officer is in the hospital this morning after a crash on the city's south side. Details coming up next. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The holiday travel rush is here, meaning longer lines at the airports. What this means for airlines and for you. Coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting the day a little more humid, a little warmer than it was yesterday, but for Thanksgiving, things will change. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, November 24th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a great week. I know my daughter says she's having a great week because there's no school this no week. School. <laughs> That's right. But if you go to the grocery store, it's a little crazy here yeah. as we're on Thanksgiving Eve. Best of luck out there today. If you do have some run some errands, we'll talk to Stephen about traffic in a moment. But first, changes afoot. Yes. Uh, speaking of grocery, yeah, I had to run pick up a couple things yesterday afternoon and how was it? Uh, park we yeah, out that. there. So, yeah. But HEB was taking care of business. People oh, yeah. were moving along. A lot of, lot yeah. of folks just, you know, kind of doing the, mm -hmm. trying to not do bumper cars with all the grocery carts and everything. <laughs> so uh, if you are heading out, a couple of extra little things at the grocery this morning, grab a jacket, but uh, it's not as cold, anywhere near as cold as what it was yesterday. We are at 59 right now. We've actually gone up somewhat. 56 Stinson, 61 in comfort. And again, Remember Balverde uh, up into the hill country it was freezing yesterday and we were at 38 degrees. A lot warmer, a lot more humid out there as well. A couple of hints of fog, some reduced visibility around Port SA and uh, Castroville. That's it right now. Maybe a little bit going up uh, 35 in towards San Marcos, but it's not a huge deal. If you are traveling today around the state, it's pretty nice, but that's a different story tonight with the chance for a little bit of rain. Mold is on the low side and uh, throughout the rest of today temperatures. We were down right around uh, 58, 57 earlier this morning, and uh, we'll stay in the mid upper 50s. Lots of clouds around here. Southeasterly wind at 10 to 20 miles per hour, so it is going to be breezy today. A hint or two of sunshine later on 70 at noon. We're going to top off at 73. And then a couple of showers move in here tonight. The front's going to move through in the overnight hours. We will still look at some rain tomorrow, but primarily in the first portion of the day and temperatures are going to be dropping down throughout the day. Good looking Thanksgiving weekend as far as nice November temperatures. Not the prettiest though, and then more rain chances over the weekend. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. What's the latest? Good morning, Mike. Well, the only difference that we've seen since we've been talking about the shot at Transguide is that there's just a few more vehicles out there along I-10. Now you can see, of course, we still have our records there hoping to clear this rollover that happened a little bit earlier this morning, but it's been there for a little while, so make sure that you are driving carefully in this area. This is out going towards 
towards Seguin. So let's go ahead and take you to the map, see how that's impacting those lanes. And thankfully, it's still pretty much green on the screen. We're not seeing so much of an impact when it comes to the drivers that are heading out in that direction. Now, keep in mind, this is an 18 wheeler that rolled over off I 10 eastbound at loop 1604. So you bet we're going to continue to watch this throughout the morning, but make sure you keep your eyes on the road as well. Keeping you uh, taking a jump over here. We do have a stall off loop 410 westbound at Fredericksburg Road, not causing any issues, but of course, make sure you check those vehicles before you get out on the roadways. A wider look at the map. We just had a few incidents that popped up here. Now this incident up here off I 10 east uh, I 10 and 1604 looks like it's just a, a discrepancy there. That's actually there's nothing out there. Just check the trans guide cameras. So some good news, but we're going to continue to keep our eyes closely on these roadways. Thankfully, if you're traveling into the downtown San Antonio area in the next few moments, green across the board, pleasant drive from Pleasanton right now, 37 with 28 minutes, 28 minutes from 37 in Plotusville and right now 23 minutes from uh, Lavernia on 87. We're going to continue to watch this crash throughout the morning. Let's see how that impacts that morning drive time. We're going to have more construction spots coming up as well. Guys. All right. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, it was a close call for a San Antonio police officer who was hit by another driver as he crossed an intersection. That crash taking place on the city's south side. Our Jonathan Goto joins us live with all the details. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. I'm located at the intersection of Roosevelt and Southeast Military, exactly where police tell us that crash happened. And we have learned an arrest has been made. Let's take a look at what that scene looked like just a couple of hours ago. Now, we do know police responded to the 1100 block of Roosevelt and Southeast Military, an intersection on the city south side at 235 this morning. They say a woman driving a pickup truck was heading westbound on Southeast Military when she hit a street crimes officer traveling southbound on Roosevelt. Now, police tell us the woman was detained in suspicion of driving under the influence and a field sobriety test was done on scene. Now, we do know that officer was taken to Mission Trails Hospital and is expected to be okay. Reporting from the city's south side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, a man trying to cross the street on the west side ends up in the hospital after being hit by an SUV. It happened just after midnight. Police say the man was leaving a Walgreens parking lot when he crossed North General McMullen at West Commerce. The what do you say the driver of the SUV hit the man. The driver did stop to render aid. The man was initially unconscious, but eventually came to. He was taken to University Hospital in stable condition. Another man is in the hospital after police say he deliberately grabbed a hold of a moving train. San Antonio police say the man was sitting on the train tracks at South Zarzamora and Hazel Street around 1045 last night. They saw the man and the man saw the train coming and stood up and grabbed the handle of the train. He was pulled under the train and he is believed to be in his 40s and was rushed to University Hospital in critical condition. Topping your morning headlines, jury deliberation is set to continue today in the trial of three men charged with the killing of Ahmad Arbery in Georgia. The jury spent about six hours deliberating yesterday before adjourning without a verdict. They are to resume later this morning weighing murder charges against father and son Greg and Travis McMichael and their neighbor William Roddy Bryan. The McMichaels say they suspected Arbery was a burglar when they chased him past their home in February of 2020. Travis McMichael testified he fired in self-defense. There is a big concern for America's this holiday inflation. Whether you're traveling or staying home, this will be a more expensive holiday. The fact is we always get through those spikes, but we're going to get through this one as well and hopefully faster. But it doesn't mean we should just stand by idly and wait for prices to drop on their own. President Biden announcing yesterday he's tapping in the nation's emergency oil stockpile to bring down prices. Some experts doubt it will have any real impact, while others claim prices could drop up to 15 cents in the coming weeks. Won't happen tomorrow, but it'll happen over the next few weeks that people hopefully will start to see the difference. When it comes to overall inflation, many experts blame the government's pandemic stimulus policies that have pumped more money into the economy. This created huge consumer demand for products with supply unable to keep up. Now to the Thanksgiving travel rush this year. Airports expect to see the largest surge in travelers since the start of the pandemic this week. Millions are already hitting the road ahead of the holiday, but troubles at the nation's airports and a rise in COVID cases are raising concerns. ABC's M. Wynn has details. This morning, an early glimpse at the frustration some Americans will face when they join the Thanksgiving travel rush. Like these long lines of cars outside the airport in Phoenix last night. 
The TSA expects the number of travelers will reach pre-pandemic highs this week. More than 2 million people are expected to fly today alone. Airlines are preparing for most planes to be at full capacity as the federal mask mandate fuels an increase in mid-air altercations. We're seeing unruly behavior on a rise, so we want to make sure that we're working um, and communicating effectively, but also understanding that there's mandates. The travel rush comes as the airline industry struggles to recover from a worker shortage. Both the TSA and the airlines say they've bulked up staffing and insist they're ready. And now new concern about the holiday fueling a surge in COVID cases. New infections are up 42 percent nationwide in the last month. New York is now averaging its highest number of new cases since February. And in Colorado, hospitals in the Denver area are 95 percent full. Emergency rooms are routinely diverting patients because they simply don't have the capacity to take care of people who need help. Now back to the airports. Here's another worry for some travelers. Police in Portland, Oregon are now warning about thieves stealing catalytic converters from parked cars at the airport. They say the thieves are reselling the metal inside. M1, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, a local couple thankful for the help of the staff at Methodist Hospital for making it po possible for them to say I do in the midst of grim circumstances. The ceremony wasn't the biggest obstacle. Michelle Nino's husband, Freddie, contracted COVID in September, treated at two other hospitals before being put on the ECMO at Methodist. Freddie's condition was dire. As Freddie fought to live, Michelle, along with the members of the Methodist Nursing Unit, organized a wedding that took place on November 17th. Like, I don't think there's anything we really can say uh, to show our gratitude. And the nurses from all the different hospitals that we've been at, they are amazing. They really are heroes. And Freddie remains on the ECMO machine, but his prognosis looks positive. 610, about 58 degrees. And the silver and black giving back to the community this holiday ahead on GMSA. We're going to have the Spurs delivering smiles with all the Thanksgiving fixings to the families and senior citizens. And coming up next, we'll break the uh, breaking the chains of homelessness. We'll tell you how a new grant awarded to Sam Ministries is helping people on the street to get back on their feet. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are starting the day at 58 degrees. Doesn't really feel like Thanksgiving yet, but we will see changes later tonight. We'll be right back. Welcome back at 614. Sam Industries equipping those actively fighting homelessness with access to money that can help them continue their journey to success. The organization just got a grant for $17,500 from the Texas Bar Foundation to help clients pay specific pre-approved legal related costs that are obstacles to getting and keeping housing. Many people experiencing homelessness are able to make strides by finding jobs and living arrangements, but small legal expenses or document fees can stop their progress. Those include, include fees for birth certificates, ID cards, court fines, and drug offenses. These fees add up over time, creating money loss, causing people to lose employment and ultimately fall back into homelessness. Officials with Sam Ministries say the grant will help break that cycle. So it will prevent someone who otherwise um, is employed, um, can, you know, can obtain and, and maintain their housing, but they, they just can't get that, that sum of money um, together. The people who benefit from this grant have to be SAM ministry clients, either must be living in the shelter, enrolled in one of SAM's housing programs. For more information, you can give them a call or head to their website. And our Stephen Cavazos has been tracking the progress there at I-10 East. Let's go ahead and check back with him. You know, unfortunately, I wish uh, we had better things to talk about here, but this I uh, just talked to our friends at TransGuide I-10 East at Loop 1604. Looks like we could be seeing this out there for another few more hours. Now, this crash came in a little bit earlier in the morning. What we're looking at are some possible cleanup crews uh, due to an 18 wheeler crash. It happened out there toward, heading out towards Seguin. Now, this is on the access road. It's still very dark, but we see some flashing lights out there because that's where first responders 
responders do have a portion of that blocked off because they are working to clear this out. So again, our friends at Transguide saying this could be a few hours. Let's take a look right now at the map, see what we're looking at along 1604 I-10 eastbound. Thankfully, the lanes are still pretty much green. We've not been seeing a lot of buildup in that area, but again, if you are heading out in this direction, maybe look for those alternative routes or uh, give yourself plenty of patience this morning because we want to make sure that our first responders have time to clear this up. Let's take a big jump over here towards I-10 and we talked about some roadway construction. This is something that we've brought up a few times here on the morning show. Uh, this started on Monday, November 8th and will wrap up on December 6th. It's a full closure of the eastbound exit at 540 ramp to State Highway 46 or otherwise known as Bandera Road. Traffic has been diverted to the US 87 exit ramp and then in the meantime, we'll use a scenic loop route turn scenic loop road turnaround uh, while the construction crews are out there. Keep in mind, we still got a few more weeks to go on that roadway construction. Let's take a wider look at the map. Now, some of those incidents thankfully have cleared out, but the big problem is going to be right here along I-10 East at Loop 1604. We're going to continue to track this throughout the morning and keep our eyes on the road. But as always, make sure you do the same. Guys? Yes, sir. Thank you, Stephen. And I guess it'll be a little chilly, a little rainy tomorrow morning at least. Yes. Uh, to, and as the front moves on through here, temperatures will be dropping down. So we'll start off in the overnight hours. It's going to stay throughout most of the evening very, very mild like it is right now. And actually, we'll be warmer tomorrow. We're at 59 right now. And uh, look at that bottom number. Dew points at 55. And the high temperature today up to 73. So about four, almost five degrees above normal. And then notice by 8 o'clock, a little bit of a, a chance for a couple of showers around here. We'll see a few of them out ahead of that front moving on in. Love this picture and especially love the caption. Down in Poth, country living. Yep. Uh, as far as stargazing, mm, it's not going to be the best weather for it over the next uh, well, four or five days. We're going to have a lot of high clouds that are going to be hanging around here. You can see we do have some of these clouds this morning. We'll see a little bit. Is that the glow? Is that my imagination? It looks like kind of an orange glow right there. I, I want to help you out, Mike, and it's what, six, just about 620, so sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sun's coming up just after 7 o'clock this morning, so I just didn't know if it was, uh, you know, just my eyesight there. Anyway, <laughs> if you can see Mark behind the camera right now. Uh, throughout the rest of today, we are going to keep a lot of the high clouds around and some sunshine thrown on in here. And then here's the, the small chance for a couple of showers to move in here later on this evening, just sort of scattered about. And it's just all the moisture that's going to continue to be pumped on in here. And that'll be the case going into late evening, early morning hours, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. And one thing to also take note of is, you know, kind of draw this into quadrants. We're going to have majority majority of the rain or the best chance to see any heavy rain is going to be further up well up to the uh, north and east of us. And as the front pushes on through and again, it'll be about this time tomorrow morning. We'll have a few of those showers around here. So again, very, very mild at this time tomorrow morning. And then wind's going to shift around. We'll see drier air come on in here throughout the course of the morning and by the afternoon. Most all by noon tomorrow, most all of the rain should be out of here. Maybe a few lingering showers well down to the uh, south. And uh, then we're going to still keep a lot of clouds around. It's going to be breezy tomorrow. And temperatures will just drop down throughout the rest of the day. As far as the uh, good Good way to track temperatures with dew points as well. Front comes on through here, pulls that drier air in. And so now, despite the fact we have drier air, we'll still have clouds around upstairs in the atmosphere. And then the humidity tries to come back in a little bit more Saturday, Sunday. And then that sort of gets uh, taken on here with another weak little front, if you will, that's going to be coming on through. So we've got this big flow coming in out of the southwest. That's what's pulling in all those mid and high clouds, that high moisture. And then that low is still wanting to develop out there. That's what's going to throw some more energy in here by uh, Saturday and give us the next chance for some rain on Saturday. So the forecast today, mild jacket this morning, probably not by this afternoon, 70, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature up to 73 and it is going to be breezy today. A couple of showers are possible again tonight and then overnight we have a better chance for some rain and really most of it's going to be out of here by noon. Some folks may be out of there even a little bit sooner than that. Tomorrow the front moves through temperatures will drop down throughout the day and it's going to be windy Friday dry as far as uh, rain is concerned. So going to be chilly out there and then rain comes in here on Saturday and Sunday should be rain free, maybe a couple leftover showers early in the morning. So if you have to do outdoor decorations, you've waited, mm -hmm. unlike a lot of us, uh, Friday and <laughs> Sunday and today. Still okay. plenty of time, though. Yeah. I mean, we may start on the indoor ones next, right? Yeah, on Saturday, Saturday would be Saturday. a good day for yeah. that. So. Perfect.
Perfect timing. Good Thank plan. You, Mike. Uh, 620, about 58 degrees. And just ahead, a Michigan family being forced to adopt their biological twins born via a surrogate. That's next in your GMA First Look. Big news for heartburn sufferers. Introducing Zantac 360 Degrees with a new formula that has the number one doctor recommended medicine approved to both prevent and relieve heartburn. It works in as little as 15 minutes and lasts. New Zantac 360. What makes Febreze Air Effects different? While cheaper aerosols rely on artificial propellants, Febreze uses a 100% natural propellant. Check it out. Pressure created by what's in your air makes the bottle spray, which means freshness everyone will love. Febreze. Like pulsing electric shocks, sharp stabbing pains, or an intense burning sensation. What is this nightmare? It's how some people describe shingles. A painful, blistering rash that could interrupt your life for weeks. Forget social events and weekend getaways. If you've had chickenpox, the virus that causes shingles is already inside of you. If you're 50 years or older, ask your doctor or pharmacist about shingles. In this morning's GMA First Look, fighting for their family. Since they got out of the NICU, we have had them with us every second. Um, but we are still not listed on the birth certificate as their parents. Tammy and Jordan Myers telling People Magazine that they had their babies Ames and Ellison via surrogate last January. But laws surrounding surrogacy in their home state of Michigan require families to legally adopt their own biological children. We had a meeting with um, an adoption agency to start the process and she looked at me point blank and said well you are not the mother. We have to go through background checks. A lot of rigorous things that you normally have to go through when you're doing an adoption process for uh, a child that's not your own. And coming up at 7 a.m. we'll have more on the Meyer struggle and their message to others exploring surrogacy. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. Check out our San Antonio Spurs offering a helping hand this Thanksgiving for families on the west side. Some of the players joined by the Coyote and other volunteers at the Frank Garrett Center. They helped give out Thanksgiving meals to 200 families and seniors, all thanks to the San Antonio Food Bank. The turkeys provided by HEB. It, it was almost one person who almost got emotional over it, and that just shows the impact that we have um, on the community. Um, you know, it's huge being able to give back and you can't really put it into words, you know, when, when you're able to change somebody's life like that or, or have an impact on somebody's life like that. It just makes you want to do more. This is a no-brainer for me. You know, I'm, I'm happy, I'm thankful and grateful to be able to come out and give some of my time to, you know, these people. Well, tonight the Spurs are back in action. They're taking on the Atlanta Hawks 730 at the AT&T Center. Go Spurs to go. Time now, 626 and 58 degrees out there. A local artist is grateful he's still able to inspire the city he loves with his works of art. That story is straight ahead on GMSA in If These Walls Could Talk. But coming up, a wrong man wrongfully convicted freed this morning after spending more than 40 years in prison. Find out how he was freed and the place he has never been and wants to see for himself. And taking a look outside with Trans Guide, Stephen has been tracking this accident all morning there at I-10 East at Loop 1604. We'll be checking back with him. He met us in the hospital this morning after he attempted to cross the street. Details on exactly what happened coming up next. Our beard game going strong here on GMSA and KSAT 12 just ahead. An exciting update on our No Shave November fundraising efforts. And taking a look outside with live cam. Wow, beautiful shot out there. It's looking really nice out there, but uh, just fair warning, it's not as cold as it was yesterday. Mike, you weren't crazy. The sun is starting to come up <laughs> yes. on the horizon. <laughs> and it's right about where he was pointing. He wasn't yes. sure, but we now it's team effort. We can back you up on that. Yes. Welcome back, everybody. 630 on your Wednesday. It is November 24th. Happy Thanksgiving Eve. Thanks for joining us. I hope you got all your items at the grocery store already because you said it was pretty busy. Yesterday afternoon, had to get a, a couple of things, and yeah, it was getting mm -hmm. pretty. You know, it's going to be busy today because all yeah. of a sudden you look it, and go, "It is There's the onions for the top of the green bean right. casserole." Right. And I was in line for something, and turned around, and a lady had cut the line behind me, and I heard somebody say, "Ma'am, the line is back there," wow. and she wanted nothing to do with her. The other lady said, "I'm going to let that go because it's the holidays." Aww. There you go.
Yeah, you know, it, if, if it takes you an extra, what, two minutes now? Cause right. I mean, well, it's four now with inflation and everything, and <laughs> supply chain issues. The time as well. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, I mean, it just, yeah, it's going to, don't, you don't have to cut lines or anything like that. So anyway, uh, yes, I, well, I don't know about craziness, but I'm not seeing things. That is the glow of the early morning sunrise. And as you can see, we've got lots of clouds still hanging around here. Mold is on the low side, and we're going to have temperatures which are about 15, 20 degrees above what it was yesterday, like Steph was alluding to. We're in the mid 50s. Someone grab a jacket this morning, and then throughout the rest of today, we are going to have mostly cloudy skies. Warm and humid will be up in the low 70s again. And and a couple of showers are going to be possible tonight. Now, tomorrow, those rain chances will extend into tomorrow morning. We're going to have rain primarily in the first portion of the day. Most of it's going to be out of the area by noon. The front's going to move through. We'll start off very warm and humid, and then temperatures will be dropping down throughout the day. It's going to be windy, and we'll end up 60 upper 50s by late in the afternoon tomorrow. Friday, mostly cloudy, still chilly. So once we get into tomorrow, Jack is going to be a really good idea pretty much through the whole weekend. And over the weekend, we will have some showers around on Saturday. And then it's still, like I said, going to be on the chilly side. But a good looking Thanksgiving weekend because it's going to really feel like it. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority hitting the roads this morning. This gentleman has the very latest, Mr. Thank you, Mike. Well, let's take a look right now. Uh, we've been talking about that situation off of I-10 at 1604. We're going to get to that in just a moment, but we haven't taken a quick look around town. Let's see how things are shaping up for this Thanksgiving Eve morning. Uh, Loop 410 West at Cherry Ridge. We're seeing a few folks out there. Now, keep in mind, some may be staying at home for the rest of the week and maybe enjoying a cup of coffee while they're watching this newscast, but others may be having to hit the roadways. So let's go ahead and see what you can expect right now if you are maybe heading out towards Seguin. Take a look right now at this map. Now, this rollover has been there for quite a a while I 10 eastbound at loop 1604 along the access road. First responders still out there. I did talk to our friends at Transguide. They have told us that this is going to be a few hours, but again, this is on the access road, so we're going to watch that. But if you this is in your direction to work, maybe find those alternative routes this morning. Let's take a wider look at the map because it's pretty much been a green start. However, these few incidents that looks like they just popped up along I 10 and 410. We'll find out what's going on there and see how that impacts at morning drive time. But thankfully, these inbound times, it's been green across the board throughout the entire morning. So if you are traveling to San Antonio, maybe in the next few moments, not going to find any issues at this hour. So one last look here around town 37 at Jones Avenue. Quiet start to the morning, what we're seeing on Transguide. But again, we're going to continue to watch that rollover crash off I-10 East and 1604, guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a man rushed to the hospital after being hit by a driver. This happened on the west side. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live with details. Jonathan, what's the latest? Good morning, Mark. Well, we know police have told us that man was simply trying to cross the street when he was hit by a vehicle. This is what we know so far. Police say that man is believed to be in his 20s. He was crossing the street from a Walgreens parking lot. This is all taking place on the 100 block of North General McMullen Drive and West Commerce. That's on the city's west side. Now, they say a woman driving an SUV hit the man. They tell us he was unconscious when they arrived, but EMS quickly arrived on scene. Now, it's important to mention the driver of the SUV, the woman, did stop to help. Now, police say there is no suspicion of DUI, therefore no charges are pending. As for the victim, he was rushed to University Hospital and is expected to be okay. Reporting Jonathan Corto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. More technology jobs are coming to the Lone Star State. Governor Abbott making that announcement up in Austin. Samsung is planning to build a $17 billion chip making plant in Williamson County outside of Austin. The agreement could save the company around $250 million over the course of 15 years. The agreement to contract the multi-billion dollar factory would also give the district an estimated $46 billion in benefits. Topping your morning headlines, one of the longest wrongful conviction cases in U.S. history is finally over. Kevin Strickland is finally free this morning after 43 years. ABC's Lindsay Davis spoke with him and have us a happy ending decades in the making. It's been a long 43-year fight for Kevin Strickland, but he can finally say he's a free man. Still in disbelief. Missouri Judge James Welsh ordered his immediate release ending one of the longest wrongful convictions in U.S. history. Strickland was convicted by an all-white jury in 1979, despite having an alibi and no physical evidence linking him to the crimes. He's remained adamant about his innocence all along.
His case for exoneration largely hung on this crucial piece of evidence. It's a recantation of a witness. She has since died, um, but she really did a good job documenting um, her recantation. So we believe it to be a very credible recantation. Back in May, Jackson County Prosecutor Jean Peters Baker announced that her office found Strickland innocent. So to Mr. Strickland, I am profoundly sorry for the harm um, that has come to you. But at the time, Missouri law prevented her from being able to release him or bring his case before a judge. Let's just call it what it is. This is wrong. Strickland's first exoneration hearing was held two weeks ago after a new law passed in August allowed Baker to file a petition on his behalf. His brother tells the Kansas City Star that he cannot wait to see him to say, welcome home, brother. Now free, he gets the chance to finally fulfill one lifelong wish. You know, I've never been on a beach and I want to go out far in the ocean where you can't see any land, any direction, and not just go out there, but get in that water. And that was ABC's Lindsay Davis reporting. And now to South Korea, where COVID cases are soaring. South Korean officials are reporting more than 4,100 new cases in over the past 24 hours. That is the highest number since the pandemic began. The death toll there stands at over 3,300. The prime minister says the situation is urgent enough to consider emergency measures. Big news overnight in Europe, uh, a woman will be taking over as Sweden's prime minister. Magdalena Andersson had been the finance minister, but is now the new leader of the Social Democratic Party. This is a big milestone for Sweden, who has been viewed as one of Europe's most progressive countries when it comes to gender relations. But this is the first time a female has held these, this position. And take a look at this. A spacecraft launched by NASA is on crash course with an asteroid. It's hitched right on the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket that blasted off from the Vandenberg Space Force Base in California around midnight. The craft is for NASA's Double Asteroid Redirection Test Mission, or DART. Next September, NASA is going to see if crashing the spacecraft into an asteroid not, will knock the asteroid off its course. The idea is to be prepared for the highly unlikely scenario in which a huge asteroid might someday threaten Earth. Earth. NASA says it does not know of any asteroids that could threaten Earth in the next hundred years. We want to get you updated on our progress for this year's No Shave November fundraiser. All right, Stephen Cavazos joins us now with all the details. Good morning. We've been uh, doing great, guys, and obviously it's a reflection of our community and all the guys that are pursuing, Mark, Mike, Jonathan, uh, a lot of the Morning Show guys and other guys in our newsroom as well. Uh, we've raised close to $11,000, and it's so awesome. amazing, and a big thanks to our community. Uh, now, things have been going really well in the newsroom, and I've gotten used to doing this a little bit more. <laughs> I'm going to miss doing that once the month is up, but uh, here why GMSA's own Jonathan Cotto is taking part in this month's initiative. Hey folks, I'm Jonathan Cotto and the reason why I'm participating in No Shave November is quite simple. Cancer sucks. And it sucks even more for those who have to undergo those long and treacherous treatments and it's time that research finds a cure to put an end to cancer once and for all. Thank you, Jonathan. And here's a quick look at the leaderboard. Mike Oserhage leading the way, $2,226. I'm right behind him with $1,505. Mark Austin, you got $1,186. We have Justin Horn with $911. And Max Massey with $800. Now, as Jonathan was just mentioning, uh, this is all the funds that we're raising here. will go right back towards cancer research, treatment, and prevention. And for more information, just head to ksat.com slash no shave. There you will also find a link to donate to Team KSAT as a whole. And of course, we got about six days left, five days left. We're going to continue to share those updates right here on GMSA, but it has been amazing. We are number two in the country, 70 bucks away from 11,000. We're exceeding our goal. That's that is great. Awesome. Quick story. My parents are in town for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh -huh. You guys know that. Last yeah. night, my mom, the sweetest person on the planet, I'm looking at you, Mike. She goes, how much money do you need to beat Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Quite a bit. Uh -oh. That's funny because they gave the big donation to me. Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. My mom, the magic <laughs> Number one, <laughs> hey, Mrs. Austin, come on now. The magic number, Mom, is one thousand forty dollars. All right, <laughs> Mrs. Austin, we're waiting. <laughs> Thank lot. you, Stephen. Thanks, guys. Um, Mom, make it happen. <laughs> Six forty, about fifty-eight degrees. And here's a look at what's coming up after the break. His artwork brings the outside inside. A local muralist serves up his talents to restaurants and other businesses. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about him. 
And welcome back at 644. A career that has lasted more than four decades was nearly wiped out in one night. A local artist recently lost most of his painting supplies to thieves. But Katrina Weber shows us how he's continuing to bring beauty to some businesses in spite of that ugly crime. He is the subject of this week's episode of If These Walls Could Talk. Some of it is concrete. From his mock-ups to his actual murals, everything about Jimmy Ramirez's artwork is airy and bright. With it in businesses across the city and beyond, he tries to bring the great outdoors inside. I don't use spray paint. I've never used it, though I, I do use airbrush. He says he likes to create art the old-fashioned way, by hand, as much as possible. This is my very first Ramirez has been painting professionally since the late 70s, starting out with signs for businesses. Back then, we really didn't paint on walls. If, if it was not an advertisement, uh, you really didn't paint on them. Eventually, Ramirez did get into murals. Not only did that work come much later, but also takes much longer. A piece like this one inside Hacienda Vallarta took months to complete. Now he's surrounded by painted walls, both in his west side neighborhood and right in his own home. Recently, though, he thought his painting days might be over. Most boxes were full of tools and stuff. He woke up one morning to find the van he calls his mobile office had been stolen. I had all my brushes that I carry with me. Uh, the majority of all of them, my tools. Eventually, police tracked down the van, but it was empty. He had to start from scratch, replenishing his supplies. So now I cover it, and I, I put this on it, lock it. Thanks to help from family and friends, Ramirez's career is back on track. No longer clouded by that crime, he's painting skies blue again. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Everything was custom. Thank you so much, Katrina. Let's take a quick look at our roadways for this Thanksgiving Eve morning. U.S. 21 at St. Mary's, 35 at Caesar, Ch Caesar Chavez. Things have been pretty much quiet throughout the entire newscast. However, I-10 East at Loop 604 is a big problem right now. We have a rollover that happened hours earlier, and it's been there for quite a while. It's off I-10 eastbound at Loop 1604, heading out towards Seguin. Now, keep in mind, I talked to our friends at Transguide. They, expect, they say expect this to last a few more hours, so we'll continue to watch that, of course, throughout the morning. Let's take a jump up over here because we still have a stalled vehicle off Loop 410 westbound at Fredericksburg Road, not causing any issues. Let's take a jump over here. Another crash off I-10 westbound at De Zavala, not causing any issues. We'll continue to watch every everything here on the roadways throughout the morning. But one last look around town looks like things are shaping up to be a little bit busier than we had hoped, guys. Yeah, a lot of people traveling out there. Thank you, Stephen. This is quite the scene. If mm -hmm. you uh, have never been to San Antonio before, perfect time of year to go down and walk around the world famous Riverwalk. That just a it, that just brings a smile to your face, mm -hmm. kind of gives you shivers a little bit. Looking at all the Christmas lights down there and all the folks hanging around. Yeah, it, it is so, so fun to walk along. And then one of my favorite spots is right there on Market Street, mm -hmm. looking up to the north and looking at the river. And there's the, you know, the, the little part that goes off toward uh, River Center. Well, I think the best thing about this picture, Mike, as you stand back, is it almost looks normal. Yes, it does with all the folks down there, too. So it is just, it's so, it's. So fun. Of course, got the big Christmas parade on the river on uh, Friday. If you are heading to that, uh, it's going to be chilly. Weather's going to be nice, cloudy skies, but uh, it's going to feel like Christmas and everything. So it's going to be fantastic there. Got a lot of clouds hanging around. You can see a little bit of uh, kind of that glow of the sunrise there off along the horizon. But we are going to be keeping a lot of high clouds around not only today, but also really through the weekend. 59 right now, 61 comfort, Canyon Lake 61. Temperatures are 20 in some cases almost 30 degrees warmer than what they were at this time yesterday. And of course, we've got a lot more humidity out there, but this is going to be going away as that front moves through later on tonight. So here's what I was talking about as far as the uh, mid and high clouds. Water vapor imagery shows all the flow coming in here from the southwest, and that really is not going to be changing over the next couple of days. Here's computer models and going through today. A lot of clouds still hanging around here. A couple of breaks here and there. This one does have a few showers, which uh, we'll maybe see a couple of them trying to pop up later on this evening, and then especially in the overnight hours as the front moves on through here. And again, if you had to kind of point to one direction where one part of the area that might see the majority of the rain, that's going to be up to the east and to the northeast one two inches of rain if there is possible we'll have a couple of heavier downpours scattered here and there but 
Unfortunately, it's not going to be a real huge rain event. And then as the front works its way on through here again, more scattered showers. Front comes through early in the morning. It's we're going to be watching it about this time tomorrow morning, and we will maybe even see a little bit of sunshine mixed in with some of the clouds by later on in the afternoon. It is going to be windy and temperatures are going to be falling after a very, very mild start early, early tomorrow morning. So officially we'll hit our high temperature in the wee hours of the morning and then temperatures, like I said, continue to drop down. Here's the uh, satellite and radar picture and you can see that flow coming in here from the uh, the southwest and there's a big kind of an upper level low, which is just sort of sitting out there and that's going to be one of those not really a nuisance feature, but it's it's just going to again sort of hang out there. That southwesterly flow keeps those mid and high level clouds coming through here. We get the front at the surface to move through, but that thing still sits there. That will eject some energy in our direction by Saturday, and that's going to give us the chance for some rain on Saturday around here. And then perhaps even uh, well, maybe a couple of showers that thing could sort of want to come in here. But again, it's just going to sort of hang out there. It, it's also going to give us a chance for some rain by perhaps the latter part of next week, middle latter part of next week. 70 today at noon, mostly cloudy skies, and it's going to be breezy today. Wind out of the southeast at about uh, 10, 20 miles per hour, 73 for a high temperature. A couple of showers going to be possible tonight and then tomorrow, especially in, in the morning as the uh, front moves on through here. It's going to be windy, cooler throughout the day. Friday, chilly, good looking day, and Saturday, a couple of showers. Okay, so my dad is watching from my house right now. I'm not going to get a no shave November bump today. Message not from today. dad Mike, you win. Mom's not up yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Austin. Appreciate that. Still sir. in the lead. <laughs> Thank you for the update, Major. Uh, 651, 58 degrees. And tomorrow on the Thanksgiving edition of GMSA, we are live as preparations are underway for the annual Raul Jimenez dinner. We're going to show you what they are cooking up more tomorrow on GMSA. Outside with live cam right now on your Thanksgiving Eve. A pretty sunrise there under a veil of clouds. You're watching GMSA. We'll be right back. A San Antonio police officer is in the hospital this morning after a crash on the city south side. Good morning. I'm Jonathan Cotto. We have learned an arrest has been made. Police responded to the 1100 block of Southeast Military in Roosevelt, an intersection on the city south side at 235 this morning. They say a woman driving a pickup truck was heading westbound on Southeast Military when she hit a street crimes officer traveling southbound on Roosevelt. Police tell us the woman was detained in suspicion of driving under the influence and a field sobriety test was done on scene. We do know that officer was taken to Mission Trails Hospital and is expected to be okay. Reporting from the city south side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Less than five minutes till seven. And things are moving a little slow there on I-10 East. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. It's going to be possibly a few more hours here off I-10 East at Loop 1604, where we have that crash that came in a little bit earlier. Let's take a wider look where we do have some crews on the scene. We're getting a clearer picture of that 18-wheeler rollover, but it's right there along the eastbound lanes of I-10 at Loop 1604, heading out towards Seguin. Watch out there. One big look does show quiet start so far, but really quick, Mike, we hit the 11,000 mark for No Shave November, so... Big round all right. of applause to yes. all you folks so out there. That Thank you quick. so very much for that. All right, a lot of clouds hanging around right now. 60 degrees, light jackets, good idea. And then a high today of 73. We've got some rain chances in here tomorrow. The front comes through. It's going to be windy and cooler throughout the day. And then a uh, nice looking weekend, but rain Saturday. You're not with us tomorrow morning, Mike, right? No. Oh, happy, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving everybody. Thanksgiving. Yes. Thanksgiving. Steven, you're here. No, I'm not. Okay, happy, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. You too. <laughs> we will be here. here. <laughs> yeah. We will keep the light on for you. Yes. We'll see you back here at 9. Travel safely.